Welcome to the Greyhound Adoption Center in San Diego, California. Although there is no Greyhound racing here in California, many ex-racing Greyhounds come from across the border in Mexico. They end up here in search of their own American dream. The self-funded Greyhound Adoption Center was founded by Englishman Darren Rigg. His passion started when he rehomed the dog he found in Manchester. He's taken his love of the breed over to America and after a lifetime of hard work, he's created a special place so which homes around 150 dogs a year. You're a good dog. You're one of the best. Yes, you are. There's a strong focus here on the transition of racing dogs, often arriving unwell and fearful, becoming happy, ready-made pets. First things first, they have to be bathed, uh, get cleaned up. We, we um, record their tattoos, we get them set up um, in a comfortable bed. Some dogs, we, we try them out to see if they like our condos better than, our, than the kennel house beds. If there's injuries, of course, those dogs, especially if it's leg injuries or toe injuries, we see a lot of leg injuries. Uh, those dogs are separated from the general population of our facility. And then the next step is veterinary care. Starts off with a full blood panel and a few extra things that we add on the blood panel that are specific to greyhounds. And the fecal analysis to see what they're carrying on the inside so we can treat for specific parasites. And this is all time consuming and very costly, but it's important that we do it because it helps the dogs get better quicker. The longer they're here, the more they acclimate to this wonderful home-like environment, but they don't even know what's coming yet. There's gonna be a couch next. <laughs> so they have no idea. So then the adoption process starts and that's a whole nother process and the cat testing, dog testing, kid testing. And then eventually they're adopted out to a home and that's, that's the most special time. So that you were introducing some of your greyhounds to a, a smaller dog called Trixie and uh, it went pretty well. It did. Uh, Trixie's the perfect dog. She knows what we're trying to do because dogs are very savvy. Most of the dogs we tested today have the potential to live with small dogs. And that's a, uh, an interesting aspect because still to this day, many people think that greyhounds are hyper and anything small they will chase. And most greyhounds can live with other dogs if they're properly introduced. So we're looking at her reaction immediately. She sees the, she sees the dog. She's kind of gone stiff and frozen up and her focus is on the little dog. She's never seen a dog like small before. A little bit more interested than I'd, I'd like to see. But she's got that stiffness, so I'm going to use caution. Good girl, very good. Good girl. Yeah, that's Trixie's head, yes. So let's do a little bit of an exercise here where we'll try and calm her down a little. So I feel comfortable enough letting her off leash without a muzzle on now. I'd expect her to be paying a bit more attention to the dog, but she's far more interested in people. <laughs> let's go see Trixie one more time. Don't jump on people. If she jumps on you, pretend it hurts. Good girl, very good. So she passed her small dog test today. We do the same with cats. Um, and then, of course, we need to see which greyhounds are happy to be around kids. Um, and sometimes it starts off with a, a kind of a, a tolerance and they learn that they really like kids because they, they can lick their faces and have fun. And sometimes it starts off with a dog that's a little fearful of kids. What's the worst thing that could happen? The man will pick you up and kiss you. But we work with those dogs. We evaluate them with slippery floors, steep staircases, hollow staircases, uh, riding in cars, riding in vans. Basically, socialization. Get them used to the, the world out there. One of the things we do is that we take them to a local hardware store on, a, on the uh, center of Main Street, and they go in the store, uh, meet you know the people in there. They come outside and wait for the Harley Davidsons to go screaming by and the fire engines, and they get used to it because these dogs have lived in relative isolation and just plunging them into society without some prior exposure is not really cool. You've touched on the actual facility here. I want to talk about it more because uh, especially the condos, I cannot believe you have many apartments for greyhounds. We wanted to get as many greyhounds out of cages as possible because the cages at the track that they're used to are too small and inhumane. We do use crates because some of the dogs choose that they prefer to be in a crate, but our crates are much bigger than what they're used to. They have four or five inches of blankets, water bowl, rawhide and toys. And that's the starting point of you know, the dogs becoming, transitioning from track dog to pet. But there are some dogs that love the condos. They can go in and out at will, have their doggy door, and they have their comfy space inside. We also do what we call turnout, where large groups of dogs go out together four times a day. And that seems still important because of the the social aspect, dogs are social creatures and they need that interaction. 
You've also got this massive field that we're, we're sat in right now, the run-free field. Uh, and actually, this does generate you a little bit of income as well as being an amazing facility for the docks. I call it my little piece of England because it's green and it stays green year-round. So our dogs that are waiting for adoption, they come out here and play. Sometimes they'll wiggle and jag and uh, you can just see them enjoying running. There's no doubt greyhounds love to run. We also have a membership to the field where people can pay a fee once a month and come out and use it like a gymnasium. But that brings in some revenue for us. We also have an agility training, the open dog agility training, and that brings in revenue. And uh, sadly, you know, half of my life is spent bringing, trying to bring in revenue when I'd much rather work with the dogs. You obviously take great pride in making sure this home for the greyhounds whilst they're here is the best it can be. Well, thank you. Um, we try very hard. Um, the reason it doesn't smell is because <laughs> We sanit scrub and sanitise four times a day everywhere where we've got concrete flooring. I'm proud that our volunteers and employees do such a great job, an outstanding job of keeping the place clean because um, we get inspected by the authorities at least yearly, sometimes twice yearly, and they always give us 100% marks on our inspections. And they, they refer to our facility when they're talking to people who are building new kennels. They say, go visit the Greyhound Adoption Centre in Alcohol and see what they've done because that's what they consider top notch. So that's kind of pretty cool. What is the perception of greyhounds as pets in the USA generally? Do a lot of people know about them? We never had greyhound racing in California. People are not that aware of the breed. So we just do the best we can to get the word out there. And, and when you walk a greyhound, it's like a magnet. People, what is that dog? Is that a greyhound? I've never seen one before, you know. What is, how, how nervous are they? How can you have them in a house? No, no, no. They're like giant cats. Are you kidding me? We've seen some red greyhounds here today, which is very unusual in the UK. If you were any other dog, you'd look at the red and say it's brown, reddish brown. Um, and then the fawn greyhounds are more like a blonde. So there's a definite contrast. No potatoes growing in there. Greyhound racing obviously is being banned state by state in the US and Australia has had its issues recently. Can anything be done to ensure its future? An industry in decline has animals involved. There's going to be animal suffering. So here in the States, um, it's, it's, time, it's going to phase out. The natural, it's going to die a natural death. Society as a whole has to understand that dogs that are used for racing are not just simply a resource to be used up and then abandoned at the end. These dogs deserve a chance to be to to fulfill their destiny as pets. What's the best thing do you think about working here? The dogs, the sense of accomplishment. You raise one more dollar, you get one more dog in a home, you bring one in that's critically injured and you save it. It's quite a place. It's just um, you just keep coming back and back. <laughs> Stop being happy. <laughs> Stop being happy. <laughs> They're the best kept secret in the dog world. Um, if, if people only knew, there's always a bond between people and dogs. And the greyhounds in particular are very much in tune to our moods and feelings. They seem to have an extra sensitivity that many dogs don't have. And if you choose a dog wisely, if you choose a greyhound wisely, you'll get the best pet you've ever had in your life. Uh, a dog that will change your life forever.